Hi everyone, welcome to the Immigration.ca live stream series. If this is your first time joining us, my name is Andrea and I'm here with immigration lawyer Colin Singer. Colin is managing partner of Immigration.ca. Today we're going to be discussing the latest developments in immigration news. We've also gone through our social media and we've selected some of your questions and Colin will be answering some of them today. Before we get started, we'd like to thank our friends at Halt Jewelry Boutique. They're located here in Montreal in the MUHC Super Hospital, which opened last year. The management at Halt, Halt Jewelry has been very helpful in helping Syrian refugees get settled in Canada. A lot of the products here also are handmade in Aleppo. Well, Colin, there was supposed to be a draw yesterday. There wasn't one. Well, that's uh, been a bit of a surprise for many of us. Uh, good morning, everyone. Thanks for joining us. Uh, yesterday, we were expecting uh, a, an express entry draw. Uh, it didn't take place, so it has a lot of people wondering uh, what, is, uh, what is the forecast uh, for the rest of the year. We still strongly believe that uh, applicants in the express entry pool uh, have to come forward and modify their profiles. And I think the government is trying to get as many people uh, updated in this system so that the next draw, which we do anticipate will take place this year, will probably be the biggest one of the year. Okay. Uh, so uh, we're fingers crossed. Uh, of course, only the government knows its plans. Uh, but we strongly believe there will be uh, a, another draw sometime within the next couple of weeks. Could be, could be today even, could be tomorrow, yeah. uh, or it could be in the next few weeks. But the next change will hopefully uh, capture uh, the major changes that were uh, implemented on uh, November 19. We talked about this during uh, our last uh, live stream. Uh, it affects workers in Canada, it affects students in Canada, uh, those who've studied, those who've worked. Uh, it'll affect a lot of people. So uh, I think they're looking to have as big an effect as possible, uh, and that's why we haven't seen uh, a draw yet. Uh, so we're fingers crossed, and we'll let you know. Stay tuned, and uh, we'll surely uh, anticipate this particular development sometime soon. Okay, well this brings us to family re reunification. So there have been some changes. That's been the theme in the last uh, couple of weeks since our last live stream. Uh, the government has really focused its energies, its efforts uh, on changing uh, policy that in historically uh, has been very harmful to the image of the Canadian government. Uh, what they have announced uh, a couple of weeks ago uh, was that there's going to be new target levels, uh, sorry, target standard processing times. They're looking to achieve 12 months of processing time for sponsorship applications uh, of partners, spouses, uh, and, and the target is 12 months, whether the application is being processed here inside Canada or even of, uh, outside Canada. Historically, the inside Canada applications were taking absolutely years. Okay. And even in many jurisdictions where people uh, were living uh, and visa offices in the China, in the Philippines, uh, India, uh, those applications from outside Canada were also taking years. And so it's really raised uh, a lot of concern, and hopefully these new changes uh, are going to, to make a difference. But why don't you summarize? Do you have a... Yep. a so in a nutshell, basically, it's uh, increased allocation, increased funding, a simplified application process, and short, a shortened processing commitment. So with all of those changes, hopefully, uh, we're going to see some good movement uh, in the uh, processing times. The government has increased the numbers of applications that they plan to admit for 2017. Historically, uh, we had about 47,000 applications yeah. each year uh, over the past decade. Uh, and the target levels for 2017 are 64,000. So we are seeing an increase in family cases. Uh, we're seeing, hopefully, uh, pro processing times which will be uh, unheard of uh, in the industry for as long as practitioners can remember. So uh, we'll be watching for that, and uh, if you want to have more details about that particular change, it's on our website under Immigration News. Okay, so that brings us to the next topic, uh, so parent and grandparent sponsorship. Well, uh, in that uh, subject matter, uh, for the last couple of years, the government has been uh, selecting 
uh, 10,000 applications. The first 10,000 applications that met the requirements were uh, uh, accepted into the processing stream for parents and grandparents. Mm -hmm. uh, what, that ha what, what the result of that was for years is people were hiring agencies and uh, couriering applications uh, into the system when the uh, launch date uh, typically was January, early January, first few days. It happened last year as well as the year before. Uh, so what the government has done is changed the system. They've now uh, created a process where there will be a window of time starting January 3rd where you can uh, upload a basic application form. Uh, and that uh, period uh, of uh, upload will be uh, through the end of February. And then uh, once that period has, has concluded, then the government will select. They'll, they'll just conduct a random, a random lottery, a random draw uh, of the 10,000 applications, those that meet the requirements, of course, and, and have the required income levels and other uh, elements. Again, the details of that uh, major change that was announced just yesterday, you'll find it on our website under Immigration News. And uh, we're all waiting for the new forms uh, to be released, uh, which we, we anticipate also uh, in early January. Uh, so that is a major change uh, in terms of how the parent and grandparent sponsorship. Now, what that means is uh, uh, those that couldn't make uh, and meet the, the, the quota that was imposed, uh, well, you would be allowed to uh, uh, apply for a visitor, a super visa, as they call it, uh, an application to bring in uh, parents and grandparents uh, for a two-year visit. So if you can't get permanent residence for your parent or grandparent, there's always the alternative program which allows people to uh, bring in on a visit status uh, the parent and the grandparent. Uh, that's always in place uh, if you don't make the permanent residence. So uh, stay tuned uh, to our website and the new rules will, uh, as they become available to us, uh, we're going to share them with you. Great. So then there's the temporary foreign worker program, the four in, four out rule. Well, the four in, four out rule was one of the harshest uh, policy changes that were implemented by the former government. Uh, what, it do, what it did was effectively everyone who was working in Canada uh, under all categories uh, were only allowed to work for a maximum period of time of four years. Uh, now, uh, what this what the, had the effect of doing is many people who were transitioning to permanent residence uh, fell out of status uh, when their four years was up. Uh, it created uh, big concerns uh, because the government couldn't keep up with the effect of this type of change. Uh, and what, it, what the government has done, the, the new government that's come into place, they've completely abolished the four in, four out rule. Uh, it makes it much easier for employers, uh, surely for candidates who are looking to transition into permanent residence. So now there's really no uh, uh, maximum period of time that you can work in Canada. Uh, so that, that's a, a, an important change. And this follows, uh, these, the, this important uh, change follows the uh, government's standing committee recommendation, the, the Immigration Standing Committee on, on, uh, uh, covers a, a wide range of issues. They, they tabled a major report uh, primarily dealing with uh, foreign workers and, and uh, there was citizenship and other, and other areas. Uh, but the uh, recommendations that came into effect, uh, that came into uh, discussion, uh, in September of this year has finally been implemented with the new rule change regarding the maximum period of time that you could uh, work in Canada on, on a, uh, a work permit. So, Perfect. yeah. Well, we, thank you. Well, we always thank you for, for leaving us your questions on our social media. So we've, we've selected some of your questions. So, Colin, should we go ahead and answer some? Let's do that. Okay. So the first question is from Frank. So he wrote, I am looking to sponsor my parents to become permanent residents in Canada. When I look at the MNI chart, I realize that in 2013, my income is $700 less than the required amount. But my, my income tax for 2014 and 15 are beyond the MNI for $15,000. So he wants to know, should he apply? Well, as we, uh, of course, we just outlined, there are new rules uh, that have come into uh, play. And, and uh, when you're bringing in a parent or a grandparent, 
there's going to be a lottery system uh, and you have to uh, position yourself uh, to be in the system by submitting an online form. That online form is not yet available. Once it is, you'll be able to upload a profile and uh, unfortunately, you need to have the income requirements. Uh, the, the current income requirements are still uh, from 2015. The new ones are, are not yet uploaded. Uh, we, can, we can tell you safely that you need to have three years in each of the three prior years. You need to have the minimum income. So unfortunately, uh, if you don't have the income to, 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 to sponsor a parent or a grandparent, uh, you, you're really going to have to look to uh, the super visa temporary visitor status, which can be for 24 months. Uh, that also requires certain income levels. So uh, what you want to do is, uh, unfortunately, look to see if you uh, may have overlooked some of your income. Uh, but unfortunately, uh, we've got to wait until the new process unfolds, and uh, you're going to have to have the, the minimum income requirements. So the next question, um, she writes, my mother-in-law has been refused a visitor's visa, not a super visa, to come to Canada from the Philippines. So she's been refor refused four times in the last six months based on insufficient funds. So she has 40,000 Canadian and both her, her so them and their spouse uh, have a combined income of 25,000 in savings. So they want to know, should they challenge it or should there, is there any recourse available? It's very, very difficult to challenge a visitor visa application that's been refused. Uh, it's very, uh, a very narrow scope uh, uh, to challenge these kinds of uh, visas. Uh, the, real, uh, the reality is you shouldn't be applying repeatedly uh, after you've got a first refusal uh, and then a second refusal in such a short period of time. It's not advisable to keep resubmitting an application. Uh, it's not really uh, the income level alone. The immigration uh, decision maker will look to a, a number of factors and they need to be convinced that the visitor is going to depart Canada within uh, the validity date of the, of the visa. So if you have not uh, given that uh, evidence, if that evidence is not compelling in the application, there's really no point to resubmitting multiple applications, especially in such a short period of time. So you want to work on uh, how to solidify and, and make sure that there's strong, compelling evidence that the visitor is going to leave Canada. So unfortunately, uh, there's really not much we can share with you. We surely don't uh, have enough facts to suggest that there's a way to uh, challenge this decision. Um, but um, I think you need to look uh, at a pause on, on the application that you've been submitting and take a step back and perhaps consult with a professional who can give you some insight uh, so that when the right time comes about to submit a new application, you'll be in a stronger position. So the next question is regarding parent and grandparent sponsorship. Um, so basically, so he wants to know, he's been doing some research on the process, he wants to know if he needs to prepare two sets of documents that will go together, one for the sponsorship application and one for the residency application. Well, again, uh, this is uh, a new process that's going to unfold. Uh, it's really one application. It is a two-step process. Uh, but it's one application with multiple forms and schedules. So uh, you, you do submit them at the same time, and the process will unfold in a two-step uh, manner. Uh, so, but again, what you want to do is wait uh, until uh, the new rules unfold for parents and grandparents, uh, which will take place, as we said earlier, on January the 3rd, 2017. Perfect. And the next question, so he, this person is a student, so they're a student for one year, for a one year course in Canada. They want to know if they can extend their visa and get permanent residency. Well, first of all, if you have a, a, a course of study and if it's full time uh, and it's uh, for at least eight months duration, um, you might qualify for a post-graduation work permit. You want to look into that. That would give you the opportunity uh, to uh, enter the labor market on a full-time basis. Uh, you need to apply for this particular uh, visa uh, with, within the validity uh, period of your study visa. Uh, so uh, the other thing that's interesting is if you have 12 months uh, and you are actually obtaining a diploma of some kind, 
uh, you might uh, qualify, and it, it might in itself give you additional points. Under the new rules that were announced on November 19, uh, under the express entry system, uh, the government will be uh, allocating points for those who studied for one year in a, in a, in a diploma program. So uh, you'll, you'll be able to consider applying for permanent residence as well. Uh, so you've got a number of options here uh, for the work uh, visa that you could qualify for, the post-graduation. Check out our website and we'll give you uh, some good information on how to go about that. And then if you're interested in permanent residence, uh, you could also look to that uh, option. There are different categories for you to consider uh, under the uh, express entry system. Uh, there are uh, categories that qualify for that, so take a look at our website as well, and we cover express entry immigration system uh, as well. Perfect. So the next question. Basically, this person, uh, they're British, they're British. Um, they have, they were issued a Canadian PR in two, sorry, permanent residence in June 2012. And ever since that date, they were unable to move to Canada. And the PR card will be expiring in June 2017. So now they want to come to Canada, but they have some questions. So as their PR card is going to expire in June 2017, they want to know if they can actually use that card to enter Canada without any problems. Well, the answer to that, uh, there's, a, there's a few questions there. Let's just do one by one. Okay. First of all, uh, when you become a Canadian permanent resident, you need to maintain your residence and you need to be physically present in Canada for two years in every five-year window. And that's a moving definition. That's a moving target. You constantly have to look at the date in, that you are at in question, and you have to go back five years, and you have to be able to answer positively, affirmatively, have you been physically in Canada for two years of that previous five-year window? Uh, in the initial permanent resident card period, you really uh, know uh, at a certain point whether you've met that five-year window or not. Uh, so uh, before you're renewing your PR, you have had to uh, meet the residency, the minimum residency requirements. Clearly from the facts uh, of this individual's uh, case, uh, you don't have those five-year, uh, two-year and five-year. And so there's a strong likelihood that when you come to Canada uh, as a British citizen and you, you, you come to Canada, the uh, immigration border uh, individuals are going to quickly determine that you have lost your Canadian residence. A report will be filed and your residency will be challenged uh, because you haven't met the residency requirements. So uh, it's, it's really unfortunate in this particular sa situation that you haven't met the residency requirements and unless you have humanitarian and compassionate reasons uh, why you couldn't do that, uh, it's very unlikely uh, that you're going to be able to continue enjoying your Canadian resident status, which means you're going to have to reapply again. Uh, but there was a second question, I recall. It, there, was, there was a series of questions. There's a series of questions. Basically, the next one was you know, getting a job. Uh, in the IT industry with, if their card's going to expire? So in this particular situation, if you're looking to enter the Canadian labor market and you're coming to Canada on an expired, uh, uh, what, what seems to be an expired permanent resident card, uh, you're certainly going to uh, be able to consider working in Canada. Uh, the IT industry is one of the industries that current uh, policy is targeting. Uh, so if you're a very qualified IT professional, uh, you will be able to continue working or, or, or look to Canada as an opportunity to work, uh, but you may need to be applying for a work permit, um, unfortunately. Your Canadian permanent residence is not going to be uh, likely uh, valid for you, uh, but you might be able to find an employer. There are many employers right now uh, who are in need of very high uh, IT professional, high, quali high quality, very qualified IT professionals in many sub uh, domains of the IT industry. So you'll be able to work, but you're probably going to need a work permit. Okay. And then they actually want to know how to renew a permanent resident card. Well, uh, renewing a permanent resident card, uh, un unfortunately, in this particular case, won't apply. Uh, you won't be able to renew it at this point in time. Uh, for others, uh, of course, uh, there is a process. We do cover it on our website. Uh, you do need to uh, resubmit documentation to substantiate uh, and with an application uh, that you actually met the residency requirements. So, um, uh, but in this particular in, in instance, this individual uh, will unlikely be able to renew the card. Okay, and their last question was, if they get a job in Canada, are they allowed to travel overseas for a holiday and then re-enter Canada? 
with an expired permanent resident card? No, that, that is very unlikely. Once the card is expired, uh, it's going to be clear the border, uh, the, the, the border security uh, professionals will not allow you to come into Canada. Uh, and in fact, when you're boarding a flight uh, overseas, uh, the immigration, there are uh, joint uh, policies in place, and it's, 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 it's very likely you won't even be allowed to board uh, with an expired PR card. So uh, really don't even try to do it. It's going to uh, be very costly for you uh, at, the very, uh, at the very minimum. Okay. Uh, so we have time for one more question. Um, this person is American. They're working in Canada on a TN visa. They're curious if there is um, you know, any path for them to come to become a Canadian permanent resident. Well, one you need to remember first of all when you're on a, T, uh, a, a treaty uh, a TN visa from uh, the United States, these are uh, temporary non-immigrant visas between uh, uh, that that are allocated to individuals uh, from uh, the United States uh, and Mexico, and uh, for Canadians going into the United States or working. Uh, in the States and, and Mexico. Uh, so uh, if you are an American, uh, there are uh, programs for you to consider for permanent residence. Uh, you will want to uh, look to our website. Uh, there are a number of programs that you can consider uh, applying uh, for permanent residence. Um, is that, is that covered? Yeah. I do that that yes. covers it. So uh, yeah, you'll want you'll want to uh, look at permanent residence programs uh, because, of course, being an American on a TN visa uh, is is a temporary status. It's renewable every year, um, but you'll want to get that sorted if you're looking to make Canada uh, your um, uh, new home. Uh, you'll you'll certainly have a lot of options open to you. Uh, quite likely, because you, if you qualify for the visa, you're you're likely in an occupation that's going to uh, meet uh, the level of occupation you need uh, for permanent residence. It's a matter of how many points you have, and there's many factors. So check out our site under Express Entry Immigration, and we cover all the different uh, requirements uh, for that um, for that program. Great. Well, I guess that covers everything for today. Um, we. We launched our new website, uh, immigration.ca, so please do go check that out. Uh, please also follow us on Facebook. Uh, so we'll be announcing the next live stream in the new year. So please do, uh, please do stay up to date on our social media. And also, if you're interested in coming to Canada, please do go to our website and complete our free online assessment form. Uh, we'll, go through, we'll go through your assessment, and we'll get back to you with your options. Well. Uh, that, that sums up our, our seventh live stream. Uh, we started it in August, yeah. and uh, this is uh, our seventh one. Uh, we thank everyone for, for joining us on this session, uh, wishing everyone a festive holiday season, and check back uh, with us, uh, keep uh, in tune with us, and we're going to let you know when our next live stream session will take place in the uh, new year. So happy holidays to everyone and uh, look forward to sharing with you again. Thank you very much. Happy holidays.